Hello, 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 hello. You're in. Good morning. Good evening, wherever we are. Oh, I've got my jacket on. It's really not that cold. How cold do you think it'll be? Today? Yeah. 15, 16 degrees right now? Yes. Yeah. Celsius. Right. So I'm wearing a jumper and a jacket at 16 degrees Celsius. So God forbid when it gets to 10 degrees and it never gets to zero here and all you Canadian and cold people are just laughing at me right now because I'm so temperature sensitive. Um, yeah, we thought we'd take you for a walk around the farm. Who wants to go for a walk? Do we have people on? Who wants to go for a walkie? We do, we have. <laughs> Where's our dog? We need to go tell our walkie. Um, and remember, what are we grateful for? What are we thankful for? What are we happy about? Tell me one good thing that has happened to you today or something you're grateful for. That would be awesome. I miss not seeing the comments, Phil. I feel like I'm just talking to you. I know, but you can't. You, you, you won't be able to. Can you just hold that for two seconds? Can I hold it? Yes. Just for one second. Oh, Phil's got to get something. Well, then I can see who's with us. So, um, yeah, have a look at us or us pile. So, what have we got? We've got a hello from Heather. Um, thumbs up from the Art of Curly Hair. I love it. Hey, Millie. How are you? What are we grateful for? What is one good thing? I am grateful for my legs. I was exercising this morning and I was doing jumping squats and I thought to myself, I am grateful I have legs that can jump. Hello, Pitbulls for life. Ah, nice, Heather. I'm still healthy. I can love it. Me. Thankful for our animals. I love it. Oh, my son was negative for COVID today. That's good to hear. All right, so let's go see the boys first. We'll start at the back and go all the way up. Yeah, we'll put you in the film later, but we're... Oh, we're just, okay. We're, this is like first person walk. <laughs> um, Phil, you should be. You're like part of it. Your voice is echoing. Do you want me to go over to the front? Sorry. <laughs> All right. So this is the stallion section. Arbor is so cute. He comes out of his stable. So let's show them Arbor. Arbor comes out of his stable and goes into his shelter. He's he's just like I can't. I don't I don't want to be outside. Occasionally he eats some grass. He's but... very um, cranky. <laughs> <laughs> he's not cranky. He doesn't have his ears back. No, he just He's just like, this is my spot. <laughs> Good boy, Arby's. <laughs> and he has a very masculine rug on right now. <laughs> and now we're on to the next one. So these guys are naked at the moment. I would put probably 10 rugs on them, but I overrug because I'm a cold person. Now let's guess. So we've okay. got two black stallions left. We know they're not Arbor. So is this Ollie one. or is this Q? So we've got one here and you can't see, but it's oh, a little bit in the distance. Well. So which one's Ollie, which one's Q? I need to have a look. <laughs> I actually don't know yet. Oh my gosh, this is a bit embarrassing. All right, I think I know. I know when I'm on them. They're very different. All right, I know who this is. I know. Who, what's everyone's guess? Um, uh, oh, because we're a little bit delayed. Uh, there's someone said Ollie. Lizzie said Ollie, this is. Very good, and Lizzie. someone else has said that's not Ollie. Oh, it depends which way I was facing. Yeah, but. this is Ollie, I'm pretty sure. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. No, I'm pretty positive this is Ollie. He's just a bit stockier. Does he have a longer mane? So we haven't oh, shown right. mane. But he's got the prettier head. And he's got the, the bigger tummy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit rounder and he's got a prettier head. Yeah. Which leaves the boy Ollie. Which leaves this one, Huey. Huey, come say hi. Hello. Look at his mane. Because Q's a, a year bit younger. It's a bit shorter. Um, it's only a bit shorter for a year younger. He's, he's all boxed. <laughs> he's like, that's box. What's the avocado box doing? What's the avocado box doing? Can you say hi? Hello. Hello. I'm not going to eat you. Penny was wondering how big is your property, Tash? It's 100 acres, which is big. We'll go for a walk around it. Um, hopefully we see some kangaroos and stuff as well. Yep. Yeah, you go enjoy your time. You go enjoy your playtime. Huh? Huh? You go enjoy. You go enjoy. <laughs> but yes, the, the stallions really like having their friends out and they like their stallion world down here so there's no mares there's no estrogen allowed down here 
Um, oh, they look very sophisticated. Yeah, I like that. Yes, uh, Ruby was wondering what the last one was called. Uh, the other one is called Q. Well, his name is Quarant, but I call him Qy. So Q, Qy, and Quarant, <laughs> and Ollie, and well, Ollie's Ollie, but yes. Ollie's real name is actually Markant. And I'm like, I'm not riding a horse oh. called Markant. Yeah, we're just gonna bypass the the, the water. So um, yeah, I said I'm not. I'm um, riding a horse called Martin and I wanted to call him Olympia because I thought he was going to be my Olympic horse. So I called him Olympia and his um, name on that is Ollie because I can't say Olympia. Who's going to go walking around saying Olympia? But then, um, yeah, that kind of, I don't know. I don't think he's the Olympic horse. But that's all right. Ollie is sick. All right. So now we come up to, should we head, just let them see. Where are these horses all to? yours or do you take boarders, Tash? Uh, no, these horses are not all mine. I would not be happy. The two Frisians were. All. all three of those ones are mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I have the testosterone part of the property. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have a lot of people that keep their horses here. And then we have a lot of horses that um, people own and allow us to use the Institute, which is so wonderful. We have the most amazing people that have the right philosophy of helping others succeed and helping others get opportunities. Um, so yes, we're very, very lucky. So if you want to pan that way, we've got some more horses in the paddocks. And then if you pan this way, you can see this is the outside of the arena. All right, let's keep walking up. And I can see if there's any questions. You've really helped with my confidence riding and understanding what I'm doing. I love it. Ruby, that's awesome. So glad I can help. All right, what suggestions do you have for a person looking to board? I think it's really important. You're the sum of your five friends and you're the sum of your environment. So if you can, I mean, I think about when I didn't have my own place, my criteria was the closest. <laughs> um, and I just had a massive paddock. I, uh, I boarded, well, not bored, we call it a gisting here in Australia, and there was just a, a massive, how big do you think the paddock was? 10 acres? Where's at this? Bushy Park. Oh, you may be 20, yeah. Maybe 20 acres, I don't think we know. Yeah, maybe 20. And there was what, 15 to 20 horses? Yes. And you had to take your horse out of the paddock to feed him and rug him. There was always him. one horse that went to the water <laughs> hole and just got very, very wet. <laughs> yes. Whose was that? What, Tambo? Mine. It's <laughs> Freetons like water. Someone asked how many stalls you had. We have uh, 24, I think. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is our mare paddocks that it's we're coming up way. to. Um, and we just had a foal get gelded yesterday. So I think he's run down the back. He has, because he's like, get me out of the, the stable. We can't even see him. We're going to go in there and say hello to the well, handsome poles. Oh, he's lying down. Let him lie down. Let's just walk around and then we'll see them at the end. We're just done. So probably the one that got gelded is the one lying down. And um, you can't even see them. So we'll go around the other way. Okay, are riding gloves a good idea and why? Yes, to keep your beautiful feminine hands and so you don't get blisters. <laughs> That's why I wear gloves. I have very soft, um, weird hands. I yep. do have weird hands. Mm. But who, hands up or who wants to share? Phil hates my glove smell. Why do anyway? gloves um, smell so bad? Leather, riding <laughs> boots and leather. Well, are my gloves leather? I don't even know what they're made out of. Yeah, or like a suede, perhaps. I'm yeah, not sure. but it's not good. It's not good. No, the smell. no, not great. Um, <laughs> it is autumn. It is question, autumn Jennifer. now. It is autumn. The yeah. weather just let's, changed let's, recently. We're going to walk around the whole place, aren't we? Oh, then I don't up. need to do my walk tonight. Oh, they're coming up now. Let's, let's say hello. Do you want to go in then? I just don't want to stand here. Yeah. I feel it's a bit boring for people. What are they saying? Do you start the youngsters myself? I used to. How many how many breaking ins did we do, Phil? Um, Lots. Phil was maybe, my breaker with me. Maybe he would, 40. Um, I'll just help you hold at the start. And you had me on the lungs. Yes. So I was like, if it runs, you hold it. <laughs> so it couldn't really run. It felt very strong. He doesn't know much about horses, but if the horse went to bronc and buck and bolt, he could at least keep it on a circle on the lunge. Um, so I 
to try and get my stuff together. I don't know if I ever fell off a breaker. No. Just fell off other things. <laughs> so yes, I used to break in. I used to love it. I was I was the pure fairy tale. I bred a horse, waited three years, then broke it in myself and rode it. I did that for many, many years and I loved the whole thing. But obviously I've got kids of my own. I'm a bit busier now and I can't um, keep that going. So yeah, we got two mummers and two bubbies. But this mum, <laughs> so this mum is really nice, it must be. Why are both the foals hanging out with it? But this is Helena and that's Ivy. Okay. Um, hello, sweetie. So this is uh, one of my mares. Uh, she, well, I've got five of her full sisters, so I really like this bloodline. Um, and yes, it looks like you're, you're looking after both of them. And what are you doing, Mama B? What are you doing? Why aren't you looking after your one? Oh, now Here it's it back is. with mum. So these foals, I think, are around four months old. So they'll leave their mums at about five and a half, six months. And um, there we'll show you who they're going to go into a paddock with. Can you not eat the avocado box? She's like, it could be a carrot box. Yeah, so, and then they'll go in with um, Tambo, who was my first kind of dressage horse. And he's 27 now. And he will be babysitting the two babies. I'm going to see him anyway. Away. I'm just going to come and see this little foal. <laughs> but the mums, you know when the mums are coming up like this going, please take the babies away, please take the babies away, <laughs> that they've had enough. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when they first had their foal the first month or two, they're like, don't come near my baby. And now they're like, take the baby, take the baby and take us to our beautiful green paddock mm -hmm. away. All Someone right. asked what you prefer to ride, mares, stallions or geldings? I prefer to ride awesome horses. So I don't care. I mean, of course I love a stallion. I think they just got a beautiful personality. But I had a beautiful mare that I adored. Geldings are awesome because they're a bit more uncomplicated and they're a bit more just chill. Yeah, whatever. Um, I love them all. Do you sell your Frisians, Tash? Someone yeah, asked. Yes, we, we don't have many. But no, both these foals are available. And I think I've got two mares left. Yeah, because we're downscaling the breeding thing. There was one point, Phil will remember it well, when we were breeding 20 foals a year. <laughs> and Phil does all our ultrasound scanning because he studied radiography and medical imaging at uh, university. So apparently that qualified him to scan mares and ultrasound mares. Uh, so yeah, it was a very busy time when we were doing a lot of breeding. Now we had an awesome vet who um, spent a year with me and we did lots of training together. So show the famous outdoor. So anyone that's seen old YouTube videos or um, part of the Dress Up Mastery Academy program, this is our outdoor. It doesn't get much riding now. I really like looking at myself and riding with the mirrors. <laughs> so I don't ride out here much. But yeah, are we gonna keep, we're gonna walk around the whole way? Yeah. yeah. I don't know where our dog is. Well, I don't know where our children are, so hopefully the dog is looking after the children. How's everyone going with the homeschooling? We um, have a whiteboard. We should tell a picture of the whiteboard at one point. Okay. We have a whiteboard and Danica has her watch and she just has to look at the whiteboard and look at her watch and it tells, now it's time for a puzzle. Now it's time for a snack. Now it's time for... Um, what else have we got on it? Colouring in, all different activities. This is the chicken, goat, no, no goats. Chicken, turkey, show a picture of the turkey. Yeah, I never knew turkeys actually went gobble, gobble, gobble. Really, really insane. And can you see Roo Roo down the back? So that's a silky rooster that we got for Tyler one, at one time. But yes, I do like chickens because I do like eggs. But they're, sometimes they're really stingy, the chickens, and they don't do their jobs and give me eggs. And I'm they're like, hello, I'm not paying your wage of mm. chicken pellets <laughs> unless you give me the egg. Do yeah, we do all of our front? breeding AI, don't we, Tash? Oh, yeah. We don't want to do any, no, no live. So, but we do 
yeah, we do it um, AI, but then we can inseminate it fresh. So it works just as good. And then that means if we collect the stallion, you know, a normal collection might be 60 mil, then we can take 60 to 120, depending on which stallion, depending on how happy they were. But then you can inseminate like five mares if you've got five mares that are cycling at the same time. And it's a lot safer for all of us and the horses. This side of you. It's a nice view. What other questions have we got? Um, well, you can go here. Okay. It's just walking. Um, loved watching your outdoor school videos. I remember the one of you riding when you were pregnant. Yes. Over homeschooling. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Turkeys are horrible. I was attacked so many times as a child. Oh no, Amy. I'm so sorry to hear that. I feel that way a little bit about the geese. They're a bit crazy, um, but yeah, turkeys. We have gentle. We're lucky. We we have gentle turkeys. Yeah. All right. So this is our next paddock, and here we've got some brute mares that didn't have foals this year, and we've got a couple of old horses. So they are. They were meant to. The farrier was meant to come last week, and then they were going to move paddock one over, but something happened with the farrier, so he's coming tomorrow. So tomorrow they're going to get their feet done, they're going to get wormed, and then what we do is chuck them in a paddock across. So we always like rotating the paddock every six to eight weeks when the farrow comes and that's when we worm. So just try and batch it all together. Good holding of the avocado box there. I know. <laughs> so you can see the horses are always quite curious. They're always like, hello! What are we doing today? <laughs> and there's Tambo right down the back there. Yeah, so Tambo is the closer one that's standing still. He's the one which is down there. <laughs> down there. <laughs> are we on lockdown? Would you say we're on lockdown? We pretty much yeah. are. Level three. There's only four ways you're allowed four to leave. Four reasons to leave. What um, are they? <laughs> well, for food, which I am so glad we can still go out for food. Yeah. Uh, for exercise, which we... Um, well, they've closed the all park. the parks now anyway, so I'm not sure how that is the case. You just have to, I guess, walk around. The well, yeah, you can go for a walk around your streets. Yeah. Um, to go get medicines and supplies. Yeah. And to maybe help your parents yeah, or elderly help people. people help. Yeah, but apart from that, everything is, it is locked down. Now, this is where the game would be too hard if I had to say what these horses are. <laughs> I'm going to say... This is a colt? Yeah. This one is actually, I've, I've, someone has bought him, bought him as a, is it? No, no, this, I thought it was a. Oh, that's Yansha. Yeah, I know. I thought it was a sheep. Can we point, if you look at her left, her right ear up there. It's all right. It's just an avocado box. Yes. So mm. that's the matriarch. She is the mum of, of this one. She's the mum of everything. Look at this mane. Something is broken. But yes, they're in definite paddock condition. Very dreadlocky. How are we doing, sweetie? How are we? Um, I would say this one is Yasmin. I'm going to go with Yasmin, Luke, Yansha, Versace. Something like that. <laughs> Do you still ride Tambo Tash? That's a question. No, he, um, he was doing lessons and then he, um, he did had something wrong with his lungs. What is it? I can't remember what it was called, like puffing or something. And he would yeah. just stand there and go, <gasps> and like take a deep, like a funny breath. And the vet said, yeah, 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 no more riding. So, he's the nanny. Yeah, he's, he's not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he just has to babysit everyone. And yeah, I mean, he was in my life for so many years and so much in the life of luxury with the stabling and everything beautiful. And now he just hangs out in a paddock. Oh, sometimes every bad duck is just to show the box this way hmm. so they can enjoy the Tash, walk. Tash, when did you fall in love with Frisians? I think it would have happened subconsciously when I watched uh, Lady Hawk because I remember going, that's a cool horse. I mean, I loved the Black Stallion um, and I really was into Arabs. I remember sitting with my friend in grade four. I was sitting with Kate Jeffries and we would go to the newsagent and there was an Arab kind of... Um, booklet that would come out every quarter and we would buy that and we would cut out the pictures you know of um that uh that you know how the arabs do that thing with
with their neck and their head. I remember just cutting out heaps of pictures of those ones going, oh my God, I want a gray one and a black one and um, a chestnut one. But then yeah, Lady Hawk and it was just by chance. I was looking for a dressage horse and Tambo came up and he was half Frisian and half thoroughbred. And I remember I was there to buy a dressage horse, everybody. Let me just yeah, help you understand. I was there to buy, you can keep walking and I can walk back. I was there to buy a dressage horse. And he was young and inexperienced. And they're like, oh, if you want to canter, probably canter in a straight line. He doesn't really do canter on a circle that well. I was like, okay. And then I was like, oh, you think they're all right? And then they're like, he can bow. I'm like, I'll buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, there's no bow in a dressage test. Why did I buy him? Because he could bow. I have the worst buying horses strategy ever. Bill's just nodding, mm -hmm. going, you really do. Because I just buy them if they're black or they can do fun stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, so I bought him. And, uh, the rest is history. Uh, and then I went over to work at Proud Meadows for a month. I was there and with Sabine Shoot Kerry, who was the most amazing horsewoman I had ever, ever come across and I went well she, if she can do cool things with Frisians so can I so that inspired the dream how did you find pursuing and now maintaining your career while having babies uh, as I said I was aware that I wasn't going to make huge progress in my riding career for the years that I took off to have the babies even though I did ride in both pregnancies uh, I would call it more sitting on horses than real riding. It's not like I was doing a hundred kilometers of sitting trot every day <laughs> but at the end. And I mean, that's what I love with children. Everything's fluid, everything changes. I remember that, that like the first year, I just remember going, I don't know what I've done. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Um, Cause I really like my sleep and they needed me so much. But oh, now my, my children are four and six and I'm like, oh, they don't need me as much. And oh, they're so independent. And they're not yet. I mean, they're still only four and six, but wow, you can see how that time goes in a flash. So I'm just really grateful if I don't achieve everything I want to in my riding career because I had kids, I am grateful that I had, like I would never not have that experience. I'm all about well, how much love, joy, fun and excitement can I fit into my life experience. So I'm really um, like needy. I, I go for every experience. I want to experience success in my riding and I want to experience love and joy with the kids and I want to experience fun and excitement with my husband and I want to help others and um, uh, have everyone believe in what they are capable of, of in achieving in their riding careers so there's a lot I do in my life and if that means I can't I won't ever be excellently brilliantly amazingly good at one thing because I've spread myself across I'm okay with that that was a bit of a deep answer <laughs> but you can see I think about these things all right um, my husband is bringing some chickens to smoke tomorrow and he wants to know if Phil cooks <laughs> Phil's just <laughs> giving me a look no he doesn't <laughs> um, no oh well, what do you mean like does he cook Phil cooks all the time but does he smoke I don't think he's ever smoked um, smoked chickens no I've never smoked chickens no What's your favourite spot on the farm? We are getting to it. We're about, well, you can probably see it now through the trees. It is. So we're very, very, very lucky that we have a beautiful dam on the property, is what we say in Australia. Would, you, would someone else in America maybe say a lake? Um, or do we just all call it a dam? <laughs> it is a piece of bit of water. <laughs> I'm going to come down and... But yeah, we're very, very lucky. It's so peaceful. You can come down here and no matter what crap is going on and how awful something is, like there's ducks on the water. Water, water. I mean, humans are so, like we're animals, aren't we? And if we ever come, come near water, whether it's or not, I'm looking at the ocean and looking at the waves or I'm looking at a waterfall or I'm looking at a still lake like this, straight away you can feel more grounded, more connected and, and calmer. I don't know if that's just me. That is. I think water's very relaxing. All right. 
Do you swim the horses in it? Uh, no. No, just, <laughs> just Phil. <laughs> yeah, Phil sometimes swims in it. The reason we don't is the, the surface or the ground is really soft and it would pull the shoes off the horses really quickly and I'd be scared that they were going to like pull a tendon or do something crazy. That would be a lake here in the UK. Very good. Oh dear. Why did you choose to do dressage? Okay, so chose to do dressage because I was not very good at the jumping part. So I'd be winning at an event after the dressage and then I would um, get either eliminated or at least um, like get some faults somewhere in the jumping and I wouldn't win. And I went, well, why don't I just quit while I'm ahead and just do the dressage part? Plus my mother would always put the fear of God into my head and be like, oh, well, that's fine if you want to go kill your horse because you made him jump some really big jump. I was like, I don't want to do that. Now, of course that's completely false. That's not, it wasn't very nice of her, but she was, um, yeah, she wanted to protect her child. I'll probably do the same thing with my kids. What else have we got? Rhode Island chooks are the ones you want. I don't know if we have uh, Rhode Island chooks. Phil, you're the chicken man? No, we have eyes of browns. We have um, the Sussex from the UK. Oh, there, there's those big white ones? Big white ones, yes. We have um, uh, Australorps, oh, yeah. I think it is. Oh, um, and your Anconas. Uh, Anconas. And then we have and some, the um, there's a couple of ducks, oh, yeah. a couple of geese and a, a bantam, a silky. Do your kids ride horses yet? Yes, they do. We're gonna show you a video in a couple of days of um, both my kids ride Arba, my 20 year old Frisian stallion. He, Phil and I were just watching their lesson the other day. We're just like, how does he do that? He's just so soft and so kind and so beautiful with them. Mm -hmm. And my children, are not confident riders, which is hilarious, but they're, you know, they're not, they're like, I don't know if I want to do that, I don't know if I want to do that. But when they're doing their trotting and they've just started cantering, they're getting thrown around everywhere, but they trust their body and they trust being out of the saddle or not being in control doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. So it's really beautiful to watch how they've learnt because they haven't learnt anything else that trusting themselves is okay and um, trusting not feeling in control is okay which I think is such an important life skill and if I can have them learning that and keeping that as their belief for their entire life then that's a real I've done a really good job. Um, how do you feel about Clyde's in training? I'm training mine to do dressage. I love it. Uh, my very first coach had a Clyde Cross thoroughbred and she took him to Grand Prix and he was awesome. Like, they're, they're beautiful. I love their feathers. I didn't know Arbor was 20. He is! Now he's getting old. Hi. Remember when I saw the first time your video and from then I never miss one. I can say I've learnt canter from you. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk us around outside. My pleasure. How old did your kids start riding? When they were four and six. So I've been trying to push them to ride um, for a while and they weren't that interested. They kept saying my horses were too big. But I think, was it, did we have someone come recently who wanted to ride and they were littler than them and they wanted to ride the big horse? Yes. So then my kids went, oh, okay, then it's okay to ride the big horse. This is a boy paddock. So in here we have two colts and an old horse again to look after them and make sure that they're not up to too much mischief. Now we're just going around the back of the dam. We'll just look up here. Sometimes we have, um, have a little family kangaroos. of kangaroos that just live in the back paddock jumping around, but they, um, we might have to go higher. Might check it out another day, Tash. Well, that's a bit, you mean walk right the way to the back? Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> go on, go, we'll go in the car. <laughs> cool, all right. Do you have any breeches suggestions? Uh, no, I ride in all different ones. I'm, I've now got it into the silicone seat. 
quite like the silicone seat rather than the suede. Um, I just feel it wears a little bit better. I hate how the suede could kind of wear off and go a little bit hard. So yeah, silicon is good and yeah. I'm trying to think what else I have to add about my breeches, not much. Hope everyone stays safe. Yes, thank you for sharing that sentiment. I do send love and good wishes out to the world and hope everyone is doing okay. How much field maintenance do you do? Your paddocks are gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, we don't do as much as what we should. <laughs> uh, but the one thing we did notice when we were breeding 20 horses a, a year and we had heaps and heaps and heaps of horses on the property, we had to do more. And now we don't, we hardly have any horses on the property. So we're very blessed that we can move the horses from paddock to paddock to paddock. We've had lots of good rain, so. And we essentially just, uh, we slash the, grass that the horses don't eat. Well, I do, because I do the paddock maintenance. <laughs> um, slash the grass that the horses don't eat, and then we run a harrow through the paddocks just to break up, the poo. Break up the poo to put it back into the ground. We don't, we don't like to collect it out because you know it takes all the nutrition, so and the nutrients and stuff, so we put it back into the ground and then give it a rest for six weeks or so, don't we, Tash? Yeah, and we're lucky we've got um, enough hay, enough paddocks that in summer we cut our own hay. So that's always helpful and we've been doing round bales for the last two to three years so we don't need to bring in square. If anyone has ever brought in square bales you will understand what I mean. It's an interesting job. <laughs> it's always in summer. It's always so about it's 40, 40 42 degrees and there's a storm on its way so you have to get the hay in very quickly before the rain gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> but I'll tell you what you'll never have a more satisfying wonderful feeling shower than if you've just done hay for six hours yeah so itchy dusty <laughs> i don't like being itchy and dusty no you often um nominate to drive the vehicle yeah, don't you i do but obviously oh yeah because one time we had mum drive the vehicle and we couldn't be like mum you get the hay i'll drive <laughs> all right and what other questions have we got Surviving the pandemic watching McLeod's daughters. I love it. So true about the hay. So true. Feeling the love. People are agreeing. <laughs> yep. So, can you do the toilet roll challenge? Yes. So, it's going on in the UK right now. So, to canter one handed. Yeah, I um. I, I do, we're gonna have to do that, Phil. Okay, you, not we. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, we could try it with you, but it wouldn't. I yeah, canter one hand so anyway, much. but. You do canter one hand. Because I have the other hand holding this at all. You could do it really well. All right, because Phil is actually an okay horse rider because he rides with one hand. I think we should do a challenge on who can hold it longer because I reckon you might win because you have to stack another toilet hole toilet roll another toilet roll another toilet roll i reckon you could beat me because oh, no. you've got better like hand strength than dexterity oh but you will be moving a lot yeah you're right i'm gonna beat you <laughs> feels like no you won't i'm really good <laughs> yeah no i'm gonna have to do the the toilet roll thing aren't we Phil? you will yes oh yeah why do i keep saying me okay What's Lordy up to? Don't talk about Lordy. So I'm meant to be in the UK right now, riding Lordy and Gretchen. That's what I'm meant to be doing. <laughs> but I am walking around our property in Australia instead of riding Lordy and Gretchen. So Lordy is doing great. He was meant to be going to all the international small tour competitions this year. Um, it was meant to be an amazing, wonderful time. <sighs> but that's not happening. So that's okay, that's okay. Everything happens for a reason and everything turns out the way it's meant to. So that's on hold. So yep, he's just gonna keep getting ridden and when, who knows, by the time I get over to the UK, maybe he'll be Grand Prix and I'll just do all the international Grand Prix on him. Yes. That's what we hope. That's the plan. Okay, the challenge is on, I like it. <laughs> all right. Hay is hard work. We've got hundreds of bales every summer. Definitely need the hot shower afterwards. Absolutely. 
All right, so this is the cute part of the walk. I always feel like I'm in um, like a little hidey spot. I don't know about you as a kid, but I used to love to hide and used to love to, um, yeah, just, just find little nooks and crannies where I could explore the world and, and imag let my imagination run, run wild and play with the fairies and play with the magical unicorns and all that kind of stuff. And this part of the walk reminds me of that. What does it remind you of, Phil? Can't imagine you were thinking about fairies and unicorns as a kid. Were no. you just thinking about like hitting things with sticks? No, I've... it just reminds me of bushwalks we used to go on a little bit. What did you think about on a bush? What did, what did Phil think about when he was a kid? Uh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Phil and I always laugh at each other. You guys know we've known each other for such a long time. And I'll share with him how my brain works and what I've been thinking about and what's been going on for me. And it's, it's 100 miles an hour and it's all this stuff and it's emotion and it's all, it's just very mu much. And then I go, and what about you? And he's like, um... Uh well not much uh, like nothing like he, he doesn't get much emotion he doesn't get much you're just not on fast forward like me which is good that's why we're together i'm on fast forward you're on slow motion and together we're in we're in normal speed there you go. <laughs> i say to him all the time why are you so emotionless it's like i have an emotion an emotion <laughs> <laughs> This is very good. If, if you were as emotional as me, we would have a lot of trouble. <laughs> what else have we got? In the questions. Can you walk and read? My, my eyes go up and down. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what's wrong, Mandy. Um, okay, what else? How did the two of you meet? So... We met in high school. He um, actually found out he was coming from a friend of mine. A friend of mine was in the uniform shop a week before year 12 started. I was 16 years old and she rang me and she's gone, there's this really hot guy coming to school. And I went, oh really? And she's like, yeah, but he's got long hair, so I don't know how hot he'll be when he cuts it. And I went, ew, long hair. He sounds like an idiot, because I didn't like long hair. <laughs> and I was very judgmental back then. That was a bit mean of me. So anyway, that was the conversation with my friend. And then school started and I was so excited because I was in year 12. Uh, and um, I remember sitting in the assembly and then this guy walks in that I've never seen before. And I, I said to myself, him, I want him. And so in year 12, what do you do if you like a guy and you want, you want to go out with him? you tell all your friends so they can tell him <laughs> so I told everyone in my class oh my god I really like the new guy I want to date the new guy I love the new guy and poor Phil you tell your version you just get all these people you didn't everyone looked new to you everyone yes. <laughs> and you were just like oh every time like I'd go past they'd be like that's the girl but I would always be with like three or four girls so Phil didn't even know which one and yeah then you eventually found out it was me and i don't know what you thought you, you said you thought i looked okay <laughs> yeah so that was that and then we ended up being in pe together and we had to go do an assignment together and then he put his arm around me and then um i literally remember thinking two months into dating with him i remember i put the latch onto the fence of the horse paddock and as I turned around, I, a thought came to my head and I just went, I'm going to marry Phil. And then what do you know? I did. And I remember my year 12 handbook, we all had to write down where we would be in 10 years. In 10 years? 10 or 20? No, it was 10. Okay. And I said I'd be married to Phil with an Olympic gold medal. So 50%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is another bit of fun on a horse property. I don't know if most people would have it. When you have wind, we have old trees and they all come down. Oh. So this is new. Yes. Was it here last night? No. We've had big storms though. Fell out for a run last night. I didn't go. It was cold and dark. <laughs> it's feeling warm now though. I'm a little bit warmer. 
Oh my God, can we see a pic of Phil with his long hair? Oh my God, we have to find one. Yes, because then much to my just horror and disgust, he grew it again after finishing school for a couple of years. And now you're growing it again. Why are you doing this to me? Just cycling. <laughs> it's getting cold. I need something to keep the years warm. And then there was that time when he was like, yeah, no, I don't need to go to a hairdresser. You cut my hair. And I forgot to put the little guard rail on the clippers. You know, I'm used to clipping horses. You don't use that guardrail. So I shaved his the head. guardrail, on the... like the number one, two, three yeah, or four. So yes. I shaved his head on zero. And um, he was like, oh, what do you want to do? So I'd only done one strip. So then we shaved the rest on one. He had to wear a beanie. But it was, it was cold. It was fine. <laughs> I'm not a hairdresser. Are we going up this one? Um, Maybe it's not. Yeah. I know it's hot. Yeah. All right, let's just see if there's anything else. I love your track. I'm guessing Phil cuts the grass. Yes, he does. Um, how do I do my hair for riding? I bun it up. So normally I plait it or braid it and then coil it up. Um, yeah, it's annoying. Like you, because then you, you've got to like figure out where to put the strap of the helmet. So I normally just wedge it into the bun so it doesn't come out. I love long hair. <laughs> Don't encourage Phil, everybody. It's no good. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? So we've got a question. What's your favourite competition in the UK? I've never competed in the UK. Oh, well, I have. I've competed yes, once. And we also went to, which competition did we go to, Phil? We went to the National... uh, UK Nationals. Yeah. Yes. Your nationals was cool. I got, a, I got the jacket I'm wearing at that competition. Yep. It was really good to see, wasn't it? Yeah. It was really fun to drive to their competition, I remember. Ooh, the, the one UK. I competed at? Yes. Or the, yes. We had um, just Google and it took us through like all the suburban streets and we were very scared. We were in a European truck or lorry whatever you call it over there and <laughs> I was so nervous not to compete just to get there so Phil had to drive me and I was like oh my god we're not gonna get there this is so scary and as soon as we were there I was like oh my god now the hard part's gone now all I gotta do is ride that's the easy bit okay which horse breed do you breed Frisians the beautiful Frisians. I think Natalie's saying, hi, Phil and Tash. If that's Natalie, Natalie and I, well, all three of us, we used to go to school together. She was in our PE class and she used to giggle with me whenever Phil spoke or looked at us. I trust you remember that, Natalie. <laughs> I giggled a lot, I still do. <laughs> you should do a hair tutorial on Phil if his hair gets long enough to break. You are, Hilarious, Alexandra. I love it. <laughs> have you competed in the US? If so, where? I have not, but definitely on one of my goals list is to compete in Florida. I can't talk. Complete in Florida. Compete, compete in Florida. Compete in Florida. That would be my goal. Cool. All right. I think we're all good. Oh, we went for 45 minutes. I'm helping. I got the jacket off. <laughs> All right, so I trust that was enjoyable for you guys today. Let me know what you want to do tomorrow. What should we do tomorrow? Um, Maybe we can show you riding tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. All right, nice hanging out with you guys as always. Also remember, if you're watching this on Instagram, click the follow button. If you're watching this on Facebook, click the like button. And if you're watching this on YouTube, click the subscribe button. Now also, I do need to tell you, uh, we launched our Easter package so, so quickly yesterday. I didn't quite know what's going on. So I just want to clarify, we are, uh, what are we doing? We're giving you lifetime access to one part of Dressage Mastery, lifetime access to one part of Fear Mastery, lifetime access to my three books, um, lifetime access to the goal setting all your bonuses are going to stay lifetime access and then it's uh, just xflix that you're getting nine days for nine us dollars and then if you want to stay an xflix member it's just nine us dollars after the nine days and every 30 days thereafter so trust that clears it up that gives you plenty of time to get through the books get through all the bonus resources for you if you want to get the easter package where's the link 
Facebook.com uh, backslash Easter at home. Easter at home. I don't um, know if Kate is watching this in, from inside, but if she is, can you put the link, please? And yeah, I'm looking forward to heaps of people have taken advantage of that Netflix nine US dollar offer with all the bonuses. So um, happy, happy to give them to you. Thank you for the love and really excited that I can support you guys in these times. All right, had a great time hanging out with you guys. Have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow. So trust that helps. Remember, if you guys need any help with steps, procedures, strategies, recipes, how do you do A, how do you do B, how do you do C, I've got a free training class that tells you all about creating a dressage system that works for you. Go check it out on the link below.